Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now if you watch my channel you are probably at least a little bit like me and being like me means well if I look at something I like to figure out how it works especially if I have the opportunity to just take it apart and see for myself and today is one of those moments. I have right here a 25 kilogram servo that I'm going to be taking apart and looking at how it works. Because this servo was originally supposed to go into my F111CS project. However, it uh, turns out that this is the wrong model of servo. I was ordering a 270 degree model and this is only a 180 degree model so I can't use this. So instead I ordered a different one that does actually do 270 degrees and now I have this surplus servo that really has no purpose or use so I thought, well, may as well take it apart and figure out how a servo works, because it is quite interesting. Uh, servos only have three wires coming off of them, which is the same amount of wires that a three-pin fan uh, for, a, for like a PC has. And those three-pin fans, they're you know, pretty rudimentary. They, they, they don't do anything fancy. You wouldn't expect that three wires is enough to do anything more than just power a fan, because like on the fan, uh, two of the wires are just ground and power, and the third one is for measuring the speed. Now a servo also has three wires, um, but a servo is a bit different. Now two of the wires, specifically the brown and the red one, they are still for ground and power, but the yellow one, the signal wire, is for transmitting something rather than reading something like it is on the fan. and. Other than the fan, a servo can't just rotate in one direction. It can, in fact, be precisely controlled where exactly it rotates to. I mean, that's what a servo does, right? So how do they do that with the same amount of wires that a PC fan can only really, you know, you can tell how fast it is and that's it? Well, uh, let's find out and take this thing apart, shall we? So yeah, I'm just gonna take these four screws out the bottom. And it's a good thing that this is a fairly large and hefty servo. Some uh, <laughs> these smaller plastic 9 gram servos I'm uh, using for the rest of the plane and also the uh, theory that I built before. Um, I think those are just clamped or glued together so you can't really take these apart without breaking them. So I guess it's a good thing. Uh, this larger servo right here actually just has wires. Eh, what am I talking about? Screws in it. Oh, there's wires in it. But that's not why it's easy to take apart. So yeah, looks like the bottom already wants to come off. And these four long screws, that's probably the only thing that held the servo together. So... Yeah. So that's the electronics. Um, and... Yeah. <laughs> Now I did read up on how a servo works before filming this video, so I actually know what I'm explaining here. Um, but yeah, servos are really, really interesting in how they work. Because they are incredibly simple. It, it's just, it was a moment of like, ha, ah, that's how they do it. Why didn't I think of that? Because, um, yeah, uh, they don't use stepper motors. I was somehow under the impression that they would, be, would use stepper motors because you know, stepper motors have that same very precise control of I want the motor to be in exactly this one position. Um, you can do that with a stepper motor, yeah. But stepper motors are really, really big and expensive and they also require more than three leads. They need at least four, as far as I know. Um, and you can see this motor only has two wires connected to them because it's just a regular DC motor. Uh, the actual smart bit of the servo, the actual part that makes the servo a servo and not just um, a motor with a gearbox attached, is this little PCB. And speaking of PCB, time to have a message from our sponsor. PCBWay is celebrating their 10th anniversary with their badge design contest. 
celebrating a decade of innovation with PCBWay and enabling you to win prizes by designing a badge celebrating PCBWay's achievements in the last 10 years and those still to come. They are offering free prototyping services for badges that meet their design requirements as well as a $50 PCBWay coupon. And if they like your design, they will feature it on their channels and it might even become their official 10th anniversary badge. Submissions are open until May 31st of 2024 and the winners will be announced in June. And as always, PCBWay is available for all your PCB prototyping and assembly needs. You can quickly go through their simple ordering process, receive a quote and have your design be ready for shipping as fast as within 24 hours. PCBWay also offers flexible PCB options, SMD stencils, CNC machining, 3D printing and injection molding. So whatever part you need, you will probably find an option at PCBWay to get it made professionally. I am very thankful for PCBWay's sponsorship as it helps immensely with running the channel and it is a service that I would actually use. So if any of this interests you, please go ahead and give PCBWay a try. Yeah, so the real brains of the servo is this PCB, which has, uh, you know, a bunch of wires soldered to it, a little capacitor, and then three small chips, one on the back, two on the front, and looks like some other smaller uh, components. But yeah, um, you can see that this PCB is really the interface of everything. So the three external wires, they go into the PCB, the motors connected to the PCB, and then we have another set of three more wires that go deeper into the servo. And this is the interesting part. Now let's see if my camera can focus on this. Yay! That is the interesting part. Let's actually see if we can get that out. Since there's a screw on it. Oh, did the screw just get attached to the motor? <laughs> Looks like it's slightly magnetic. Let's see if I can just pull it out. Let's see if I can just pull the top off as well. Turns out I can. Um, that's the gear, and now I have stuff on my hand. Yeah, so here we have the last component that makes the servo work. And, you know, if you're one of the people who've been watching my channel for a while back when I exclusively did um, PC modding, this is a component that you already know. Because this is a potentia... Uh, potenti yeah, right. This is a potentiometer. It's a variable resistor. Now, if you don't know what a potentiometer is, basically is you have this turning knob, and turning this knob um, changes the relation of the resistance of this variable resistor because you have these three connections. The two outer connections always have the exact same resistance between them, but by turning the knob you can skew the middle pin towards one of the two sides. So by turning this you change the effective resistance that the middle pin has to the two outer ones, like you can, you can skew it to one pin or the other or keep it in the middle between them. So if you measure the resistance from the middle pin to the other two pins, um, you can tell in what exact position the potentiometer is. And now you're starting to figure out how this entire thing works. Because the potentiometer here is connected to the uh, big output, you can kind of see the slot where it slots in, right there. It's connected to the big output of the servo. And well, we don't have a stepper motor, we can't precisely tell the motor where to go, but we can measure where the output of the entire servo is by measuring the resistances coming out of this potentiometer. And then combined with the three chips on this little PCB, we can take this potentiometer as our sensor and then have the chips figure out how much more we need to turn the motor in a certain direction to get to where we want to go. Because how this entire thing works is the signal wire sends a signal, as far as I know, actually just a PWM signal. So uh, like you control your PC fans, like the four pin fans in your PC. Uh, it sends a PWM signal, as far as I know. Um, and then the little chips read that PWM signal, translate it into a resistance from the potentiometer they want to see 
when that signal is you know, being applied. Uh, and then they compare it to the actual resistance they see from the potentiometer. And then if the actual resistance is different from the expected resistance, then it tells the motor to run in one way or the other, whichever one is easier to, um, you know, get to. Oh no, actually it's not. Um, it's not, uh, it doesn't go in whichever direction is easier, uh, because the, um, PWM signal is, uh, it's linear, it doesn't loop. So, um, <laughs> how do I call this? Like the, uh, um, there's, there's different, uh, lengths that you can use for your PWM signal on servos. Um, actually to even get the stock 180 degrees out of this, you need to use a signal expander because by default, um, most transmitters only do something like 500 microseconds to 1500 microseconds. Um, but to get the full range, you need to like do something larger than that, something like 300 to 2000 or something. Um, and that's the PWM signal that you put into the servo. Like uh, in an RC plane, this just gets plugged into your receiver, which then receives the PWM signal from your transmitter. And it then translates that PWM signal into a position it wants to be in. And if the uh, actual measured position, you know, corresponds to a higher PWM than it wants, then it goes down. And then if it, if it corresponds to a higher one than it is, then it goes up. Uh, so yeah, sorry, it doesn't loop. It, it, you, you can't make it loop. Um, but yeah, but it can spin the motor in, in both directions because, well, it's a servo, it needs to go back and forth. Um, so yeah, this is not a polarized um, motor or anything. You can run this in reverse, which is also why the wires are not color-coded in, in the middle here because there's no plus and minus for the motor. It's, it's just a regular DC motor. You can run it whichever way you want. Um, so yeah. And then the last part of the servo, which I already uh, involuntarily disassembled, is the entire gearbox. Because, well, this is all well and good. Now we know how uh, you make the servo turn to where you want. But uh, it says right here, it's, it says 25 kilogram servo. I can guarantee you, this little motor right here, it cannot lift 25 kilograms. Um... Yeah, because we have this gearbox here. Now it, it kind of fell apart and it has all of the... Great, I have it on my desk. Oh no, I made it fall apart more. Yeah, uh, it, it has all of this uh, fat on it <laughs> or grease or whatever so that it runs smoothly, which I now have in my hands and on the desk. Uh, but yeah, this servo does not have enough torque to just lift 25 kilograms. Um, so to lift 25 kilograms with this output right here, you need the gearbox. And yeah, I mean, that's just what it is. It's a gearbox. So the motor spins way, 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 way faster than the output does. But in turn, you get a lot more torque. It's the same way how uh, geared extruders for 3D printers work. You get more torque, more, more force out of it by putting a gearbox in. Uh, by just doing a bunch of gear transitions and having the motor spin faster, uh, like at a higher RPM, but you get a lot more torque on the output. And the problem is like, well, because the motor already runs so fast, you can't have the output moving like super quickly. Um, but uh, that's not really a problem. Like you don't really end up in situations where servos, especially big servos like these have to move super quickly. <laughs> it's actually kind of a bad idea to have them move super quickly. Like, um, Planes where you need these servos, like not just the swinging mechanism for my F111, which is what this was supposed to be. Um, big servos like these, uh, they're usually used in, in very, very large, very heavy planes, um, where the surfaces that they move themselves are very large and heavy. And when that plane is going, when it's in the air, and a lot of uh, air is going over like your your ailerons or your elevator, you don't want to move these too fast because that's just going to rip them off. So it's uh, actually also kind of a bit of a security mechanism that it has this gearbox, even though that's really just a, um, a byproduct. It's not the main reason. The main reason is to get the actual torque so that it can actually do 25 kilograms. Um, but yeah, so that's it for this video. <laughs> it's 
a bit out of out of character for this channel. Well, not really. The channel is just tech stuff that I like and find interesting, and I make videos about it. But I'm well aware that um, you know, mostly mostly people want to see overclocking stuff, and I, we're going to do it. I have a GTX 580 right here. Um, I plan to get to to do more overclocking again. It's it takes a lot of time. And I don't have that much time right now, which is why I do stuff like this instead. Um, but yeah, I have two GTX 480s that I just want to have some fun with. Like, they're both completely stock. Still have the stock heatsink on them. Uh, I've had these for a while, but I don't remember how good they are. So I'm just going to figure out one, which one's the better. And then have some fun with it. Like, I don't know, maybe mod it a bit. Maybe try the EVC out on it, because the controllers on them do support I2C. Uh, do some Sub-Zero overclocking. You know, finally bench something sub zero on the B550 Unify, all that stuff. Uh, I'm gonna do something with it, hopefully sooner than later. But the semester's just started again, and ever since this channel now gets sponsorships, I have a bit of a quality requirement I have for videos. I I don't just wanna like you know just throw random stuff out of there. I want there to be some actual good value to the video. So. Uh, I have a bit of pressure to like make something that's you know better, uh, something like this, which is actually like educational. Like I I didn't know how servos work before. Like I said, I always thought they just have really really small stepper motors in them, uh, which is a, honestly is a stupid idea. And I kind of knew it was a stupid idea, which is why I went and wanted to know how they actually work. And um, yeah, honestly, it's it it it's really quite genius. It's just DC motor, potentiometer, and then a PCB that translates the resistances you get out of the pot potentiometer into movement for the motor and then all of that is attached to a gearbox so that you can you know get proper strength out of it and then all you need power ground and a signal input and the entire thing just works uh, yeah and also I think the last thing I've I forgot to see is like uh, how this casing like this part is metal oh this is actually just a heat sink for the motor because it's like in there like the motors not coming out um, oh no, actually it is, it's probably just screwed in. <laughs> I just saw these two screws. Um, but yeah, like this, this metal thing's probably just a heatsink for the motor, because like if you, if you keep playing with the servo, if it's, you know, if it's something like, if you put this uh, for an elevator for a plane, for example, you, you touch the elevators a lot, this, so this servo's gonna be, the motor's gonna be spinning a lot, probably gonna get quite hot in there. So, yeah, it's interesting that this uh, metal case is like, Heatsink, because otherwise it doesn't make sense to use metal for a server like this. Like you want them to be as light as possible, even if it's going into an RC car instead of a plane. You want to have your stuff at, as light as possible. But this actually makes sense that this is metal, because uh, yeah, heatsink. Anyway, video is now long enough, I think, and I really said everything that there is to know about you know how servers work. I certainly found it interesting, and I hope you found it interesting too. I just kind of like tinkering with stuff like this, taking it apart, figuring out how it works. So, yeah, uh, it satisfied my curiosity. I hope it satisfied yours as well. And with that, thank you all for watching, and until next time, goodbye.